Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Brandon Brashears here. I hope you're doing fantastic. Um, right now we are going to be talking about conversion tracking. I just want to make sure that this is working and that you can hear me and everything like that. So I'm hoping that my audio is good. Hey everybody, how's it It's going? working. It's Beauty. All right, so let's talk about conversion tracking because this is something that's so important. I got a question from Rachel Ray and she said, hey, how do we make sure that pixels are set up properly? How do we make sure everything is working properly? And this is very, very important. Um, when you have any kind of ads that you're doing, it can be very complicated because you can have all kinds of channels sending in info. So we are going to figure out how to simplify this for you. I think simplicity is key with this very, very important that you make it as simple as possible. And um, the reason for that is that with all of the traffic channels and everything that you have going on in your in your business, in your practice, um, it gets very complicated, right? You have, you know, people that are seeing about you from SEO, you have people that are watching, you know, coming in from Facebook, from Instagram, from all of the channels that you have running. So how do you figure out exactly where everybody's coming from? So there's a few things that I think you need to do. Number one, you need to have tracking pixels across every single page of your site. And so what are, what are tracking pixels? Pixels are pieces of JavaScript code that um, basically identify the browser of the user and allow you to track these people across um, all of the different channels. We have pixels today and pixels are great tools, but I think that in the future we will probably won't have pixels and the reason for that is there's been a huge backlash on privacy and things so this is a great tool to use right now um, and as much as we can use it and as much data as we can get out of this to really understand what's working and what's being profitable for you there will always be conversion tracking with URLs and things um, but just the level of data that we get from pixels is wonderful and amazing so we need to use that right now because it's a tool that we have available to us. So that being said, our on of our websites, we need to have tracking pixels on every single page. So that way we're going to be able to remarket to these people. We'll be able to see, you know, um, what these different audiences are engaging with and it's going to help you to get, you know, better data. So that being said, let's talk about how to install tracking pixels on your site. There's a tool that's called Google Tag Manager and Tag Manager in my opinion is the, the best way to get pixels installed and the reason for that is if you don't have technical skills with your your website and things having that that container put up is going to be super beneficial for you. So if you think about a Tag Manager you're basically like installing a container that you can access at any time on the site. So you can put code inside of it without making changes. So we're just installing a container that Google lets you put that code into. You can also set rules for that container that, you know what, we only want this tag to fire on this page when the URL contains this specific keyword. And that's very important to understand too. Sometimes we want pixels to fire on every single page. Sometimes we want pixels to fire only on certain pages. And that's how conversion tracking happens. In order to have a conversion happen, we need some kind of an event to take place. We need somebody to make a phone call. We need somebody to push a button. We need somebody to uh, complete a form request. Something like that has to happen in order for us to track measurement and activity. And as much as we would like uh, advertising to be an exact science, with the veterinary practice, it's very difficult. When we have um, campaigns that are e-commerce based where we're selling something online, that is far easier to attribute sales and to understand how much money was made and to understand what the actual return on investment was because we have a standard set of products and services that we're selling online, right? And if you have a veterinary practice, it varies greatly. You have your average order value and things, but you never know what specifically you're going to get. You can average and that's definitely good. But, you know, if even if you use those averages, your bank account probably isn't going to reflect the conversion values that you that, that you've input. So if you want to be very accurate, you need to measure conversions um, on an individual basis. And I know that's a lot of work, but that's kind of, I think, the, the most accurate way to do it. And of course, we're always working with the best things that we can use and the best that we can do because you're super busy in your practice and 
there's what we should be doing and what we're actually doing and those are oftentimes two different things so want to make sure that you know you're you're using tools to the best of your ability and getting as much data as possible to be comfortable and understand what's working uh, but there is always going to be you know some kind of gray area just because it's not a perfect science and we're, unless you start selling all of your services beforehand before they come into the practice that would be the only way to act, actually track perfectly accurate what your, your revenue was from each one of your channels um, and I know that's kind of frustrating but that's like the the reality of it and that's the truth of it um, so let's um, jump over here all right, so we are inside of uh, Google Tag Manager right now, and this is um, what it looks like. What we do is we install a, uh, where is it here, container settings, oh, there it is back there. So these are the two pieces of code that we install on every single page. We install this on the head page and in the head section and then we install this on the body section of every page too. And what this lets us do is it lets us, again, install a container that we can then access without having to go in and put in a pixel on every single page. Um, once this is installed, instead of going into your, your website application, you're gonna then go and create tags. And tags work like this. So first you have the tag item that, that triggers so this could be a piece of HTML, for example. This could be anything Google related is built in already. And we have all, all kinds of other things too, integrations as well for, for third-party applications. LinkedIn Insight, that's cool. If you're doing LinkedIn ads, you'll notice that, that Facebook isn't here inside of Tag Manager. You're like, what, you know, what the heck, why isn't? Why isn't Facebook inside there? It's because Facebook and Google are competing products. And so they don't make it easy for you. It's not hard, but they're just not like going out of their way to help them. They're the biggest competitor. So that being said, we have two items that we're talking about here. We have the, the tag, which is the, the piece of code that's going to be running. That's the pixel. And then we have the trigger. What is going to make that pixel trigger? Okay, so we have to have an event and we have to have something that is being measured or monitored. Okay, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. If you have questions, be sure to comment and let me know what your questions are. So let's talk about Facebook really quick. Let's jump back into the old computer here and uh, let me know how it's looking too. This is my first time streaming with my new, it's a gaming PC, so it's made for streaming, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyways, let's go into here. So first of all, we have different spots to track things. And I guess we should backtrack just a second here because we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So how do you measure effectiveness of your marketing? I think that you need to do several things. First of all, wherever you're running ads, this is kind of in general where you're gonna be measuring those actions. You can send everything to Google Analytics if you wanted to, and you could measure everything inside of Google Analytics, but you're gonna miss data. Having Google Analytics set up is extremely all right, we are back. Okay, so I, we wanna make sure that we are tracking the actions inside of the network that we're sending them from. So um, really quick here, I, one second, I think I wanna make sure I'm connected. We are, okay, good. So we wanna have the specific um, conversion action that's happening inside of that network. So for example, you're running Facebook ads, you want to be measuring conversions inside of Facebook Ads Manager. If you're running Google Ads, you want to have Google Ads conversions running inside of Google AdWords. Analytics can give you a, a, a great overview of the whole system and the whole picture of what's happening, but having those individual um, items are going to help you to get a lot more um, data specifically on what your ad costs are, and what the cost per conversions are in that network. So I hope that that makes sense um, and you let, let me know if it doesn't. So that being said, we wanna have, typically most practices are doing Facebook, Instagram, and Google, maybe YouTube, 
but Google and YouTube are the same. Facebook and Instagram are the same platform. So Facebook and Google are the two titans and the, the biggest in kind of the, the area that we're going to be measuring and monitoring. So analytics gives us a whole picture of everything that's happening, but then inside of each of our ads manager, we're going to be conver tra tracking conversions there as well. So let's jump into this really quick. We need to have then, if we're going to be measuring conversions inside of AdWords and conversions inside of analytics, we need to have pixels ready for those. Now I mentioned that we want to have certain pixels tracking every single page and that's true. Let's go into here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So inside of tag manager, um, which is where we are, we will add um, typically conversion tracking inside of here. So if we're inside of my campaigns, if we go to conversions, and then we can add these different levels of conversions. Now these conversions aren't going to be an action, again, of somebody actually coming into the practice. Now there is a way to do it to measure that conversion. It's kind of advanced. Um, we won't be going over that today because we're talking just specifically on digital. Um, but let's talk about this. So inside of here, we have things that happen on the website. We don't use apps typically. We don't use phone calls and you can actually import data from your Google, I'm sorry, from your practice management software, but you have to have it converted by a third party company. It's very difficult, typically too expensive to make sense. So let's say we have something that happens on the website. We have these different conversions actions that can happen here. We have a purchase, a lead, a page view, a sign up, or other. And then underneath there, we name the conversion. It's very important that you have a naming convention that makes sense. That's like, okay, I understand what is happening, where this is coming from and, and how it's working. So that, that's something that's super important. And then the value. This is again, you know, what depends on, on your preference and your practice. Personally, I don't think adding values for conversion is wise because you're going to have, especially in your reporting, it's going to say, okay, you know, every, let's say every lead is worth a hundred bucks because that's what the average client value is. Okay. That's cool. Is that what's actually going into the bank account? You know, no, it's not. So is it really valuable? It depends on what you consider to be valuable. Um, so typically I don't use a value for the conversion. I know it's not recommended. It doesn't harm you. It just doesn't, it doesn't show how that, that happens. So let's just do, I'm gonna do a lead for example. So somebody comes on my website, they ask for a guide. Let's say that they're going to be using an ad guide that I made, okay? Um, and they down, download it. So they're gonna to get to the thank you page. That's how we tell that they have then downloaded the, the product, right? We need them to go from the, the landing page to the confirmation page they've converted. Until that's happened, they're just traffic. They're not a lead. So let's say, I'm not gonna use a value for it. Again, like once I have, I, I just don't typically, I like to have the just cost per conversions and then figure out what the conversions made. I hope that makes sense. Um, for every conversion that happens, uh, I think that for most people, that's the best way to do it. Um, one is just will be unique. People won't come back typically and re-sign up unless they're interested. Usually that doesn't happen. Conversion windows, this is how long the a person interacts after the ad that it's going to attribute that conversion to this specific event. So, um, you know, they have things like view, view through conversions and things. So that, that's why I really like to have this set up inside of Google ads, because when you have, like, let's say you're running YouTube ads and somebody sees one of your YouTube ads and then they go on Facebook and they see a Facebook ad. That's in, if you have view through conversions set up, people will, uh, attribute some of that conversion to the YouTube ad. So um, those kind of impression-based branding ads, you can see the effectiveness with those conversion windows. Um, and it tells you what the, the view through conversion data is here. Jumping back in here, um, you have your, your view through conversion window, include conversions and attribution model. I, I typically leave this as the last click attribution. So if the last click is set up. You have time decay, position-based, linear, and fast click. If you get on the phone with Google, they will say, hey, you should do linear because it makes them look better, typically. I just like to do last click, click model um, for attribution. All right, so jumping through. Oops, I should jump this back in here. So I pushed continue. Now we have the way that this is set up. So we were talking about you can 
install the tag yourself. Cool. We have to install this code into the head section of the specific page that we're running the ads on. So that's where it gets to the point of like, okay, we have to set up these codes on every single one of the pages. Um, it can get complicated and it can get difficult just because you have to get in there. You have to edit the head section, put it in there, make sure it's in the right place so that you don't mess up the code and have a weird piece of JavaScript that's visible. And if you forgot to close off one of the tags, it makes it so that you'll see it and then it won't run too. So it's not like that hard. It's not rocket science or anything, but it definitely, you know, if you're not familiar with how to edit the head section of your website, then you're not going to know what to do. So that's why I like to use Google Tag Manager. It's a lot more simple. So we have that container installed. Okay. We are going to use this conversion ID, conversion label, and we also have to add a conversion linker tag. So we go here, we go to Google Ads, conversion tracking. We have our conversion ID, our conversion label. And so you can add a conversion value if you want to here. So you can put how much it's worth, order ID, and currency code. For veterinary practices, you're not going to have to worry about that because, you, again, you're probably not selling a specific product online. And it's completely up to you if you want that to happen again. So I'm just going to run through and show you how to do this really quick. So this is a Googled conversion that we're tracking, okay? So we have that conversion ID, the conversion label, and that's it. So this trigger that we want to have happen, right, that has, remember, we're, th we're thinking about this. We're sending somebody to a landing page. They've then gone filled out the form and continued to that confirmation page. We only want this conversion to trigger upon, okay, we've reached that thank you page. They are now a lead. Until then, they're just traffic. So we're not gonna be showing on all pages. We're going to be showing on a specific page. The way that you do that is you click add new, you configure trigger. You're going to go to a specific page view. And there's all kinds of things that you have here. So these are all different kinds of triggers you can add link clicks, you can add button clicks, all kinds of things. But for this, we're just talking about page, oops, page views. So we go to some pages, we need the page URL has to continue, contain, and then you'd put like, uh, you know, thank you page or whatever the URL is that is on the thank you page, right? So that has to hopefully make sense. You click save, I call it the ad guide, thank you page. And I'm just making this up as we go here. For examples, hit save, hit save, and then hit save. And then we make a note that makes sense. So naming conventions are important because if you go through here, especially if you have multiple people working on this, you need to understand exactly what's happening and what you know the, the specific um, event is that you're updating here. So we do this ad guide from AdWords, um, lead tracking. And if you want to, you know, to your naming convention, you could add, you know, put your name of the person who did this and updated it. And then what we do, so that it's in there, we need to push this in here. Okay. And you could put a, a more detailed description. And now this has been pushed into that container that we have installed there. So I didn't have to go through and add code to the website, right? We, we're adding and editing code and we're making rules that this code will only fire on this page when this happens. We've done that inside of Google. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool. So the next thing that we have here, let's jump into it. So that is Google tracking. Now I think you need to have Google tracking happened for Google AdWords. So you have it inside of AdWords because that's where you have this reporting. So now when you go to your campaigns, you'll be able to see the number of conversions and then you'll be able to see, you know, what kind of conversion actions are happening here. So you can see, you know, right here, this is the conversion actions that are happening. Um, but when you also have campaigns that are running, you're going to be able to go into the campaigns um, and actually go through here and see the number of conversions. So these are just awareness campaigns. These are not tracking conversions. Um, and so as a result, we don't have any conversions happening in here, but you could see what it is and it would work directly inside of that. Let's go into business manager really quick here. Uh, there we are. 
So we've got Facebook. Now Facebook has its pixels. Um, I'm gonna go to this one here. And then inside of my uh, pixels. So we can see that we have, um, it's very interesting that they keep changing this and adding all kinds of cool things inside of this. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, but let's jump into here and um, set this up. So inside of Facebook, you need to have your pixels installed on every single page. So if you click on Setup Pixel, you can manually install the code yourself. And so instead of having to go through and add this to the header section, we can just take this now and we can copy and paste this and put it into our, our um, website, okay? So we add a new tag. And as I mentioned earlier, Facebook and Google don't get along, so that's why we, we don't have that in there. We have to use a custom HTML tag. So we, we paste what we just got. We go down and we add a trigger. Now this is the universal pixel code. So this is called a base code, okay? And this is an important distinction that you should understand. So number one, we have a, a base pixel that goes on every single site page. And then on top of that, we have conversion events. Now there's custom conversion events that you can create or there's standard conversion events that you can create. Now my suggestion that I strongly, strongly suggest for almost every single business with the exception of companies that are running, I'd say upwards of $1,000 a day in ads, um, creating custom events, they only, it's only beneficial if you're pushing tremendous amounts of data through that pixel. And what that means is that when somebody goes to that page, Facebook is able to take data of that person that's completing that event. Um, and then they're able to basically compile data on that and then optimize for that kind of a person. So they're collecting data and they're trying to produce as best of a result as possible. And so for most people that aren't running tremendous amounts of, of budget through their, their ad, um, campaigns, it's important that you say, Hey, Facebook, I'm looking for people who do this action. And you know what this action is. You know that people are likely to do this action because you're collecting data on everybody. So use those standard conversion events as much as possible. Okay. Let's jump back in here though. So we want that, that base pixel to go out on all pages. We're going to hit save and we're going to Facebook base pixel. Hit save button. All right, next thing that we're going to do, okay, so we have our pixels. That's the base pixel. Um, and we're going to hit continue. Now we have standard conversion tracking events that we have available to us, okay? So we have these different categories of businesses. And it's it makes things that are... Um, relevant to your business. E-commerce and retail is gonna be the one that works for veterinary practices because you're a retail actual store, okay? But here we have um, all of these different standard conversion events. We have view content, we have search, people that perform search within your websites, add to wish list, not very valuable for you, add to cart, not very valuable for you unless you're actually selling things online. If you have a pharmacy or something, you know, that you're selling stuff. That's cool. Um, a purchase event. Again, you have to be selling things to have these make sense for you. A subscribe button. So it's a, a paid subscription that they do. Start trial. This is not super beneficial. Um, that's again for if you, if you do a, a membership or something like that in your business. Complete registration. This is very, very solid. Um, and I think that that is a, a great a great one that you should be using just because if you do um like if you go into for example real estate we have these ones like lead when you're actually optimizing for conversion events that are leads uh, you are competing with everybody who's trying to get leads as well so it's just typically more expensive than complete registration but complete registration is kind of my go-to anytime i'm doing ads that i'm trying to generate opt-ins or email newsletters or things like that so that's helpful like let's say you created a guide for puppy potty training, you would be optimizing for a complete registration. Then we have contact. 
uh, which is great. So if they do chat with you, if they call you, if they, anything like that. Now, the way that we do contact is we add these conversion triggers that are a button click or a link click on mobile, things like that, okay? Um, jumping back in here. And then we also have find location and schedule. So you can add this schedule on, somebody has actively gone through and clicked the button that says complete appointment. So they've scheduled a time with you and then an avoid, up, added an appointment inside of there. So um, you use these pixels on top of the base pixel. So you have to copy this to clipboard and then you just put this on that specific page that you want it again to be to be triggering on. So don't forget, we need the traffic to come through and we need them to take a specific action and then they get to that thank you page. So that action needs to happen before this conversion event can take place, okay? So if you don't have something set up to do that, you're not going to be able to track those events. You're not gonna be able to track those conversions. I hope that makes sense. Let's continue on here. All right, so we have our tags. We're going to configure a trigger. Again, we're going to go to custom HTML. We're gonna paste this complete registration. Once this is set up inside of Tag Manager 2, you're not gonna have to go back through and redo it. We're gonna call it, uh, you know, this is our custom HTML, and we'll be able to call back this at any time. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we only wanna be doing that on a specific page, so let's add a new page. I'm just making this up as we go here, by the way. But it's a page view. We're only gonna show on some pages. We're gonna use our page URL, and it needs to contain the um, thank you puppy guy, All right, or whatever. And we'll call this um, Facebook complete registration pixel, thank you, puppy guy. I, 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 you don't have to be a good speller to be good at uh, marketing. Lucky for me. All right, we hit save. Okay. And then submit. And we push it up there and go. So this is how you do conversion tracking inside of each of the traffic channels. And the way that you're gonna measure that conversion tracking is that when you have Facebook ads that are running and you go into your Facebook ad, ads manager, you're going to be able to see cost per actions. And i um, trying to think of ones that I would like to show you. Uh, I'm trying to think of, so I actually pulled this up. This is inside of a, a program called Ad Espresso. And I love using Ad Espresso um, just because it helps me to get more done. I don't have to go to Facebook to run ads. And so being an ads guy saves me a lot of time. So this is an example of what happens when you have all of these different conversion events and these pixel events, tracking and managing. When you run ads, you can see exactly what you spent. We spent $165. Now, I'm gonna give a caveat. This is not a veterinary practice. This is an e-commerce play, right? We're selling an actual product. We are collecting money online. And so it's different than a practice. But you could see the same thing. If we did complete registration and you're trying to generate leads and things, then that is how that works, okay? So let's jump back in here though. All right, so we have um, how much we spent. We have our top of funnel metrics, right? We have how many impressions we got. We got how much our cost per thousand views were. We got how many clicks we got and what our cost per clicks were. And then we see that we have 19 goals. Now we were optimizing for purchase events. So our cost per purchase event was $8.70. Our click through rate was this based on, you know, we have the number of clicks versus number of impressions, which gives us our click through rate. Next we have our conversion rate. So we have the number of clicks divided by the goal that gives us our conversion rate. And then it shows us how much revenue we made specifically from this campaign. We made $851.25. Now I just went through and told you don't assign a value. If you assigned a conversion value to that conversion, you're gonna get that to fill in. The way that we're doing this though, is that we're pulling these tags 
from the checkout process. It's taking in how much money was actually made from it. And so that way we're able to see what our conversion rate is, what our revenue is, how much we made per deal. And then we can actually measure ROI. This is again, a lot easier because we're doing e-commerce here. It's not specifically like how many appointments did we get? And then how many of those appointments turned into revenue, right? Very different in my opinion. Um, but here we can see all of this additional data here. We can see what, how many people uh, did purchases. We have how many people added payment info that didn't go to purchase. We can see how many people added to cart. We can see how many people initiated checkout once they added products to cart. So it gives us an idea of what's working, where's the holes in the funnel, and then how can we reactivate these people? So like we could then create ads just for people that added product to cart or that just went to the landing page but didn't complete that landing page item. This is how you get into all the additional funnels for capturing the traffic that's coming to your, your practice website that might not be um, converting right away. So I hope that this was helpful. I would love to know if you have any questions, you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you had a, a great week this week and I will see you on the next podcast episode. I actually have um, an in-between episode coming out. And so uh, be sure to, to be subscribed in iTunes or in Google Play and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.